The non-delegation doctrine seemed to be reviving after the D.C. Circuit in 1999 struck down air quality regulations set by the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. The Clean Air Act directs the agency to set ambient air quality standards for ozone, the attainment and maintenance of which, in the judgment of the administrator, and allowing an adequate margin of safety are requisite to protect the public health. A panel of the D.C. Circuit found that this language, as interpreted by the EPA, fell afoul of the non-delegation doctrine. The panel opinion explained, Here it is as though Congress commanded EPA to select big guys, and EPA announced that it would evaluate candidates based on height and weight, but revealed no cutoff point. The announcement, though sensible in what it does say, is fatally incomplete. The reasonable person responds, how tall, how heavy? But rather than declare the Clean Air Act unconstitutional, the court remanded to the EPA with the curious instruction that it come up with a limiting construction of the Clean Air Act that did state an intelligible principle. Rather than do so, the agency sought review in the U.S. Supreme Court. The non-delegation question was the first of several issues the Supreme Court certified for review in Whitman v. American Trucking Associations. If the court was going to breathe new life into the non-delegation doctrine, it looked as though this case would be its vehicle. The court looked to the language of Article I. Article I vests all legislative powers herein granted in a Congress of the United States. This text permits no delegation of those powers. The court emphasizes the doctrine's textual hook and adds, and so we have repeatedly said that when Congress confers decision-making authority upon agencies, Congress must lay down by legislative act an intelligible principle. It is hard to overlook the somewhat forced distinction between legislative powers and decision-making authority. What is the difference between decision-making authority and legislative power? Moreover, if Congress is not delegating legislative power when it delegates decision-making authority, why need there be any intelligible principle? Put another way, if an intelligible principle in the statute can justify a delegation of decision-making authority, why can't it also justify a delegation of legislative power? But the court seems determined to draw a line in the sand. No delegating legislative power. The court turns to the question whether the statute contains an intelligible principle, stating that the degree of agency discretion that is acceptable varies according to the scope of the power congressionally conferred. While Congress need not provide any direction to the EPA regarding the manner in which it is to define country elevators, it must provide substantial guidance on setting air standards that affect the entire national economy. It is obvious that the EPA's national air quality standards affect the entire national economy, and so it looks as though the court is about to demand that the Clean Air Act contain substantial guidance about how to pick out the big guys. The original ozone standard that EPA had set had been adjusted twice before this litigation arose. In 1971, the standard was no more than 0.08 parts per million per hour. 
1979, it was adjusted to no more than 0.12 parts per million per hour. And in 1997, it was adjusted again to 0.08 parts per million per eight hours. Although the EPA was not required to, it was, had estimated its potential benefit of this 1997 adjustment to be somewhere between negative 700 million to positive 1 billion. How could such a wavering standard have been guided by an intelligible principle? We can imagine a snare drum played in the background as the court ominously recites the language of the statute. Section 109B1 of the CAA, which we interpret as requiring the EPA to set national air quality standards at a level that is requisite, that is, not lower or higher than is necessary, not too high, not too low, just right, just like Goldilocks, is the toothless doctrine about to bite? No. This statute fits comfortably within the scope of discretion permitted by our precedents. And so Whitman, for many commentators, confirmed that the non-delegation doctrine is at most a mere derelict on the waters of the law, to borrow a phrase of Justice Frankfurter's. A derelict is a ship that can't proceed under its own power. But beware, if your boat runs into a derelict, it could be fatal. In concurrence, Justice Stevens agreed with the result but preferred greater candor in the analysis. Why not simply call the agency power by its proper name? It seems clear, he wrote, that an executive agency's exercise of rulemaking authority pursuant to a valid delegation from Congress is legislative. As long as the delegation provides a sufficiently intelligible principle, there is nothing inherently unconstitutional about it. Justice Thomas also concurred in the result, but without Justice Stevens' enthusiasm. In Justice Thomas's view, there are cases in which the principle is intelligible, and yet the significance of the delegated decision is simply too great for the decision to be called anything other than legislative. Recall Justice Rehnquist's concurring opinion in the Benzene case. The court later found that under the OSH Act, the agency was not supposed to take the cost of safety into account. Congress had decided. But if Congress had punted that question to the agency to decide, then possibly that would be too great to call merely a delegation of decision-making authority. Moreover, the Constitution does not speak of intelligible principles. Rather, it speaks in much simpler terms. All legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress. Justice Thomas has brought the court around to his views before as, for example, to his view that the Second Amendment creates an individual right to own guns. But it is not easy to formulate an alternative to the intelligible principle conception. So, until further developments on the Supreme Court, this is something we can take home with us.